Welcome to Seymour from the Front Pew podcast, coming to you from the broadcast studio at Seymour First Baptist Church in Seymour, Tennessee, and featuring thoughts and discussions around loving God, loving others, making disciples, and living the life. I am your host, Tiger Brooks, and now on to the podcast. All right. This is one I've been waiting for. Mm. I have been waiting to to sit down with Ben Paddock to hear his story. And uh, I just want to thank you, first of all, for being very gracious with me in the pronunciation of your last name. I think a lot of a lot of folks, you know, if you haven't picked up on this in, in East Tennessee especially, we want to shorten everything. And so for many, you know, I just would assume and make the false assumption that it was paddock. Mm-hmm. But it's paddock. And many people make that right. Same pronunciation. And uh, and you you give grace to all. Yeah, I'm not one of those paddocks that um, <laughs> corrects everybody as they mispronounce the name because yeah. I mispronounce plenty of people's names. So yeah. I give grace. So Ben Paddock, if uh, you don't know Ben, if you haven't uh, met Ben, uh, I can't. I don't know where you've been. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Um, but Ben, uh, prior to my coming here and up through the first year that I've been here. You were an intern. Uh, mm-hmm. You uh, and your praises were sung uh, highly as I was coming on board. They were very pleased uh, that you were a part of what was going on here, and you're doing a fantastic job, and still are. But uh, now you are the newly minted college minister, mm-hmm. and you are you've moved from intern to actually being. Uh, on, you know, paid gig, part-time, full-time, part-time, part-time ministry position. I don't even know what you call that. <laughs> it got more confusing. It did. Happened. It really did kind of get confusing. But uh, we're going to get into your story, and, and we'll kind of get into uh, your journey. But I want to just start with, you know, tell me a little bit about you growing up, uh, where you're from, and then, you know, your journey to faith. So... It's a long journey. I uh, grew up in a Christian home. Um, when I was about four years old, uh, my father and mother accepted Christ. And um, from that, um, I've always been around church, always been around um, hearing uh, preachers preach. Um, back in the day of revivals, evangelists, um, church camp, uh, that, that was me growing up. Um, my dad was a big believer in putting God first before sports. And I can remember leaving baseball games early to get the Wednesday night church. I can remember all of those types of things. So I've been around, um, that my whole life. But with that, um, came some confusion as a young person. Um, I can remember back when, I was five years old hearing these messages preached and just um, thinking about not wanting to go to hell, not mm-hmm. wanting to burn in eternal fire. Right. Um, those things stick out to you as a young person. For They did for me. Um, and I can remember going to my mom and, and just at, you know asking her about this. And to the best of her ability, she gave me a clear plan of salvation, but my concern was not going to hell and burning in fire. Um, so um, looking back and as I grew a little older, um, there was still conviction there because there was no uh, addressing sin mm-hmm. and the real reason that Jesus came to die on the cross um, as um, a payment for, for sin and for my sin. Yeah. And so as I grew older, I wrestled with that. Um, and... I can remember a time and point when I was probably about eight, um, even all the way up till I was about 12, um, wrestling with that in my uh, growing up with um, the the church I went to, you know, saying the right words, doing the right things, you know. Um, And and at about the age of 12, I can remember just 
giving that over and saying, you know what, there's nothing in me that um, I have done, I've said right, wrong, um, and it's a total dependence on Jesus Christ and what he did. And it's just that. It's just simply that. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it is a uh, simple faith as a child. Yes, but as a child, I wrestled with that a lot. And uh, from that point on, um, it was um, really life-changing. Um, and, and for me, I was able to solidify that and just say, it, it was, I can, I can remember it in my mind, just a, a wrestling of, you know what, I hear all these things and I know if I just, in Scripture, it's a simple faith in Jesus Christ. And if I was to stand before Jesus today, it would be how, why, why do I belong here? Because of you, Jesus Christ. And right. that's it, nothing right. else. And, and at that point, um, life, uh, really for me, I would say began. And so one, one thing that I want to draw out of, of what you just said, I think that, that people need to hear because I think this is true for a lot of people, is that for for a period of time and for you know some of your life, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, so you correct me if, I, if this is a wrong assumption or a wrong take on what you just said. But for for some, for you, for a period of time, faith was about circumstances to be avoided rather than what you gain in terms of your faith. Uh, in terms of you know, I don't want to go to hell. Mm -hmm. And rather than God loves you and has a plan for your life and those kinds of things, is right? That, is that that would that that's spot on? Okay, yeah. And and I think that that uh, when it becomes that, and I think your story is echoed by lots of folks who might hear this this mm -hmm. podcast. Uh, it's 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 a it's a sad statement to make, but I think it's 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 about where you put your weights mm -hmm. in in your faith life. Um, yes, faith allows you to miss hell and make heaven, but it's f so much more than that. It's so much more. And, and it's a so, relationship with God. And, yeah. And I think it's been beneficial. Um, I think of scripture where it says, work out your own salvation. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I, I think on that and that part of my life of working that out and, and coming to the understanding of it's a relationship with God, I get to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of, yeah, the byproduct is, yeah, I'm not going to hell because God didn't create hell for uh, for us. Mm -hmm. He gave us a way out for that. Yeah. Um, and that that's not what it was about. It's about a restoration of a relationship with God. Yeah. And that's the, I, I say it a lot, and I'll say it a lot through this, and, and the best life that we can have here on this earth is one in relationship with God. Mm. Amen. It's what we were created for. Yeah. Um, so little Ben works it out, <laughs> comes to faith. Obviously, you know, we never have it all worked out, but mm -hmm. talk about the next phase of your life where, you know, when you growing up through high school and thinking this is, this is what I've, this is what the Lord has planned for me. And you started out on that journey. Yeah. So as a, as a high schooler, um, I excelled athletically, if you will. Um, but not academically. Um, <laughs> and if it wasn't for uh, the, the athletic part of it, uh, I would have failed miserably in school. That's the one thing that kept me uh, plugging along and getting... Because okay, you have to have the grades, right? I had to have okay <laughs> grades, and, and I, I always wanted to make sure I had the okay grades. Um, but as far as life beyond high school, I had no idea, um, except for I thought, um, you know what, it'd be... It'd be cool to be um, a golf pro. Um, and uh, I can remember uh, even in high school when you have that um, dress-up day of what you're going to be when you get out of high school. I, I dressed up as Payne Stewart. And ah. Not many people would know what that, that would be. but um, That's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, Where would you find the little short pants? Uh, my aunt had a pair of those. <laughs> so I wore the knickers. And, yeah, yeah. and uh, for those... I don't know Payne Stewart. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, high socks. Yes, knickers. They the little, were the they little were fantastic. Hat, yeah, you know, sent the message. That's of, bold. That was bold. That was a bold choice, Ben. You know, when I was in high school, I dressed with with boldness. Yeah, you could do it. You were the man. Yeah, my wife does not let me dress with boldness today. Uh, 
<laughs> Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I but, would love to wear stuff like that. But she's like, no. Come on. She won't let me out of the house. Come on, Ben. Yep. Yeah, I, I tried. Those yeah. of you on strictly the audio podcast are totally missing this. But if you're watching on YouTube, which you can, you can get a load of my life. We're coming up on Labor Day uh-huh. as we record this. And so you can't get too many more wearings out of this. That's <laughs> so right. I'll put it on. Anyways, this is your story. So moved on. And, and really, I see that as part of my journey um, and where God has me today. I was somewhat backward. I didn't like to speak in front of people. Um, I, I didn't have any problem you know, playing something because I could just focus on that and block everything else out. But as far as speaking in front of people and, and doing things in front of people, that was not my jam. I just did not enjoy that at all. Yeah. But in uh, I did go on uh, in the into the golf business. That's uh, something that many people probably don't know uh, about me. And uh, I was well on my way uh, to be um, a, a clubhouse pro. Uh, I had started that. I went through business school one, passed my player's ability test, uh, was working in a clubhouse. Um, but in that, it forced me to give lessons, give group lessons, speak in front of groups, kind of um, hone in some skills on and comfort level of being in front of people and uh, outside of the church, if you will. Um, but at the same time, there was a falling away from uh, what God would have for me. Um, I kind of used work as an excuse not to go to church, not to be around um, the things of the Lord, and was working seven hour, or seven days a week and, and, and just tons of hours. Um, and in, I'm originally from Indiana, and in Indiana, um, that was, uh, it's a seasonal sport up there, so in the summertime, fall and spring, uh, when you can make hay, you, you have to stay open. And the, the club I was at was open in the winter as well, and staff went down, so I would be the one that fill all those hours if it was warm. Um, so I, I honed in some skills there, and at the same time, um, to shorten the story a little bit, um, it's also where I met my now wife, um, uh, which is maybe a story for a different time. Um, but it is part of my story here in a minute in regards to God working in my life. So not really being involved with what the Lord would have for me um, uh, and, and occasionally still going to church um, through um, the conviction of the Holy Spirit kind of didn't let me go. Um, and so uh, through that, um, there was a, a point in time after I'd been in that business for probably seven or eight years, um, the Lord started working on, uh, what are you doing? And, and is, is there eternal value in what you're really striving towards? And uh, through uh, the pastor of our church where I was going, uh, a little church in Crawfordville, Indiana, uh, Fremont Street, and just some of his messages, um, the Holy Spirit was able to work through that and really convict me of my relationship with God and where it was at. Hmm. That's, that's interesting that you began to feel, I guess, not maybe not an emptiness, but a, a shallowness mm-hmm. in what you were pursuing and, um, and convicted that God may have something better for you mm-hmm. or he created you for something more. Correct. And so uh, married at this time? No. Not married. No. Okay. And and so this is really where I think that God started um well it's it's where I started saying yes to God uh, beyond salvation. Mm-hmm. And I speak of this in our class a lot. This this faith in God um, more than than salvation. In other words, God is there, um, yes, uh, a faith in Jesus Christ for salvation, but there's a faith that goes beyond that. And if you look through Scripture, you see that faith in, in the likes of, of just about every one that followed after the Lord. You look at Abraham and Moses and Esther and um, Hannah with, with, with Eli. You look at uh, you know, all the different people in the Old Testament, uh, Joshua and Josiah and then Peter and Paul and John, there was this faith in God that he He has you mm-hmm. and he has a plan for you and he's created you um, uh, to to glorify him. Yeah. And, and so uh, in that um, uh, is where 
I'll, I'll start, I guess, um, talking about Kaya as my wife. Um, we had been dating for about four years, and there was a, a she was, um, at that time, uh, not a believer, hadn't accepted a, a faith in, in Jesus Christ, and, and um, I was convicted of that. But at the same time, God was working on her life through ministries at college like Campus Crusade for Christ and, and different things. I didn't know that, but God's also working on my heart going, you know, this is pretty serious and it's four years and, and you're either going to have to uh, do something uh, more of a commitment or not at all. And, and, and God had convicted me that, you know, you shouldn't um, get married to someone that's not a believer. So um, I gave that to the Lord and I, and I told him, okay. So I broke up with my now wife mm-hmm. at that time, girlfriend. Um, and and, and and you were honest and said, this is, this is the, mm -hmm. this is the crux of the matter. Yes. Okay. And, um, at that time she had told me that, you know, she'd been, um, trying to sort that out a little bit in her life as well. And she had some people in her life that were speaking, uh, uh, truth into her life. And like I said, I was kind of aware of it, but not fully aware of it. And she knew who Jesus was. She had grown up in, in church to some level, but then had fallen out of even going to church, but didn't have an understanding of who Jesus was and her salvation was could be placed in uh, in him, uh, through him. And, and so hadn't really uh, worked through that part. So we stayed in contact through that. that so this is after four years, though. This is after four years. Okay. And, and things are as... Uh, on the Napoleon Dynamite, say the things are kind of serious. Yeah, uh, um, <laughs> things are pretty serious here, um, and so it was a big deal, and yeah, it was uh, sure. kind of painful for her, painful for me. Uh, but it was me saying yes to the Lord, and saying yes, Lord, I will put you over her. Um, and I look back in that, and uh, that was kind of that start of that journey of faith beyond salvation of. Your ways are better than my ways, and I'm going to trust you. And um, even though I, I love her, I will say no to her and yes to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's so important for so many things because that that alignment of putting God first in people's lives are is so important because if we... Um, I think of Scripture where God says... Um, Love the Lord thy heart with all thy soul and mind, and, and love others, right? But I don't think you can love others properly unless you love him first. Sure. Um, and it, there's a reason he said love love God first, mm-hmm. and uh, because then everything else just lines up. Yeah. He, he gives us the capacity to love others the way that he would love them, mm-hmm. because people are stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we can't love like he loves without him loving through us. Mm-hmm. And I want, I want Kaya to love God more than she loves me. Yeah. Because that helps in our relationships. It helps with our relationships with our boys. It helps with our relationships with those that we're in contact with. Um, and the ones we're serving in, in, in uh, the life of, of Vestal right now as mm-hmm. well. Um, it helps us. But um, So I said yes there. Um, and uh, we'll jump ahead a little bit. Uh, Spoiler alert, uh, we got married. Um, <laughs> uh, we've been married for almost 26 years now. Um, but uh, uh, she was, we were able to have multiple conversations um, beyond that. Uh, she actually went to Australia for six months after that. Um, back then we wrote letters because there was no uh, cell phones. And <laughs> yeah, back in my the, uh, Email was uh, a, a very new thing, so we really weren't able to do that. Um, uh, but if just a couple of times with good old AOL. And, um, but nonetheless, um, so uh, we got married, and um, we started going to church at Mount Strum Baptist Church in Zionsville, Indiana. And uh, when we were in Indiana, uh, from the time we were engaged beyond, that's where we went to church. Um, and part of the, my life journey is um, when we started there, uh, I had a Sunday school teacher um, ask me if I wanted to teach a Sunday school class, and I said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to speak in front of others. That's not, that, once again, that's not my jam. But all along, the Lord had was working on me, changing my heart. And uh, so eventually I became a, a Sunday school teacher, 
uh, about six years into our marriage, realized that marriage was harder than I thought and was making all the, the mistakes that a, a new married couple makes. And um, uh, we were able to be involved with the ministry, Family Life Ministries, um, out of Arkansas. And they do uh, weekend retreats all throughout the United States. And there's one in Indianapolis. We were able to go to that. And the second, so it was good enough. And, and that particular one was really hard on me. Um, I walked away from that that weekend knowing <laughs> I had a lot of work to do. Yeah. Um, which also began the journey of our passion with uh, marriage ministry. Um, and we volunteered there for um, about four or five years, helping um, with the behind the scenes uh, things that take place within those weekend retreats in Indianapolis. And uh, at that time, we had a, uh, a newer pastor to our church, and uh, he had been there for uh, four or five years, saw something in me, and, and, and just uh, had asked me and kind of actually called me to, you know, step up. Um, you know, I see something in you. I kind of feel like, is the Lord calling you into ministry? Is he calling you uh, into uh, 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 even being a pastor? Um, at that point, I'd been teaching Sunday school class for a little while involved with family life ministries, kind of searching with what's the next steps. Am I going to, I, I, I tried to um, uh, join the staff at family life ministries, um, actually on two different occasions. The first time they told me no, the second time I kind of realized that's not what God wanted for me. Um, but then uh, my pastor's like, you know what, um, at this point, um, if, if the Lord is calling you into ministry, um, why don't you come on staff here? Uh, in a lay position, um, and uh, so uh, he started working with me at that point in time, and and I was uh, prov- I had the role as as marriage pastor at Mounts Run for uh, almost nine years uh, before we left Indiana. Um, in that time frame, the Lord had kind of challenged me to um, we we'd done a lot of the different. Um, uh, roles that you might think of with marriage pastor in regards to um, just a lot of classes on marriage and, and even uh, financial uh, situations. and uh, uh, But full-time ministry uh, as a, it was not going to be um, a thing that would be available at the small country church in right. Zionsville, Indiana. Yeah. And uh, so uh, full-time ministry, what would that look like? And so I'd sent my application out to a few different places and quickly realized that an education, a college education, was going to be needed. Uh, eight or nine years of experience is not good enough. And so uh, then we started looking at different schools. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I think that one thing that I wanted to bring back out, but I think it's applicable to everything that you're saying, is there was a period there where you realized that there was a faith beyond the saving faith, and it was a sustaining faith. Mm-hmm. You know, people, again, I think that's an important point for people to understand that God doesn't want just to save you uh, and redeem you. Certainly, He that's that has to be the beginning point so that He can do anything in your life. He's you must be redeemed and then in a right relationship with Him. But He wants what's best for you. He's created some you for good and to bring Him glory. He's given you gifts, and he's given you all these things, and and he will begin to line those things up when you submit to his will, mm-hmm. and just sustain you, bring bring into your life what you need, even though you may not know that you need it at the time. And I think that was a that's a very good point that you brought out there. So fast forward, um, you know, you realize that the some of these doors are closing. You feel like you need to expand your horizons in terms of your education, and that brings you up to making the move here, I would assume. Is that correct? Yeah, and and thinking, if you if we have time, it's probably going to require me to backtrack just a little bit, um, but I think it's important um, in this journey of also, uh, what I say is is hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. and what it is to learn to to know it's the wooing, the, the wooing of the Spirit, the voice of the of the Holy Spirit versus my own wants and needs and, and things. Right. And, that, and that also goes back to a time where... Um, so I, I, there was a time where I, I shortly after um, marriage, and I think uh, maybe I'd, we'd had our first son, uh, Cade, um, 
I knew the golf business was not for me, and, and the Lord was kind of working on me, you know, weekends, holidays, at our busiest time, not good for family, not good for uh, participating in the life of the local church. And so I, I got into construction at that point in time. Um, and so also at that same time, uh, decided to take on uh, a subcontracting and building our own house. Um, so uh, was able to do that and built the house we thought we would just live in the rest of our lives. Um, and uh, had lived there about seven years when um, in the construction business understood that the economy was in the process of a major downturn in um, 07 and 08. Went to Kaya and said, look, um, this this isn't going to look good. We're already kind of house broke. Um, and uh, if I take a pay cut, which it looks like I might need to, and, and all expenses are going up, um, we're going to be in trouble. So mm. we put our house up for sale. Um, I'm, I'm, and that was me listening. I, I looking back to the Holy Spirit saying, you need to sell this house. And we sold it in three weeks. Um, just before the economy uh, takes a downturn. And then uh, we, we bought a house in a subdivision um, that looks like every other house in the subdivision yeah. with foreclosures all around us. Um, two years later, I kind of started getting that same feeling of the Lord that you need to sell this house. And I'm going, I can't sell this house. <laughs> There's nobody's going to buy this house. The house across the street looks just like ours. Um, it has been for sale the whole time we've been here, two years. And... Uh, and I went to Kaya, and I remember just saying, you know what, I, I have the same feeling. I have to believe it's of the Lord. If it is, then the house will sell, you know. And uh, um, But we're going to need to get out of this house what we have in it, and including um, our realtor fees. And so we put the house up for sale, um, and uh, we sold it in three weeks. Wow. Um, two houses. Two houses, and there's a house across the street. I'm sure they were they – were, uh, very frustrated. Uh, same house, same model. Um, and we were actually, I think it got about $5,000 more than they were asking for theirs. I didn't understand it except for going. The Lord. Yes. Good. So we were able to buy a foreclosed house in the country and live there for about 10 years. And, and the reason I wanted to backtrack to that was all along this way, God is providing equity in houses in a now a, a ridiculous a, economy and, and a, um, and enough provided us the way I see it was the money to be able to go to school at the age of 50 years old, mm -hmm. which goes against um, what I would say is normal. Yeah, you could say that. Um, so uh, I looked at it as this is the Lord's money and, and he's led us to this point. And so I'm going to go to school, which led to coming to Tennessee yeah. to catch back up where you had asked. We'd looked at a few different schools and, and at that point, um, I, uh, to keep the, 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 the journey somewhat shorter, we, we landed at Johnson University. Mm -hmm. um, and thus, we are packing up our bags and, and moving everything we've known for, um, you know, our, really our whole life. Yeah. And uh, um, a stretch, but I felt that, once again, this is what the Lord wanted um, through prayer and, and asking and searching, God, what would you have for us to do? And it went against the grain of what would be normal for anybody. Yeah. And and was not easy, but at the same time, there was a peace in it, knowing, okay, God, I don't know what you're up to, um, but we're going to do this. And yeah. with the trust and the faith that doing what you're asking us to do and having a faith in you um, is the best place that we can be. I mean, you, once again, you're looking uh, all through Scripture, uh, oftentimes, the people in, um, that uh, God has sh shared with us, they, they didn't know what next steps were going to be. Yeah, It could have been pretty ugly, and sometimes it was. And, uh, and, but then sometimes, you know, it always worked out for his glory. Yeah. So. And I think that uh, people need to feel the weight of the decision that you made. I mean, at this point, you have three boys. You have three great kids. And I mean, we don't, that's another, uh, parenting episode probably. Um, uh, but you all did have done great with those kids. But again, you've got three boys that you're responsible for. You've got, uh, a wife, you've got this stirring in your heart that God's wanting something for you. And you, you, I hate to use this term, but I think it is apropos of rolling the dice, mm -hmm. you know, and selling and kind of going for broke and moving to a new place and, and, 
plugging yourself into school uh, at the age of 50. Uh, and that's another aside. Ben and I are the only people on staff that share the same decade. Uh, <laughs> it's like uh, there's there's Bob, and then there's me and Ben, and then there's everybody else. You know, is, is way down there in another decade. But uh, we digress. Um, so we're going to have to probably move it into third gear here. Okay, sorry. But no, no, you're good because this was this was gold. Um, so you you get into school. You're looking for a church, uh, mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, yeah. Let's let's talk about that, and then move into finding a church and finding a place of service you know, here. Yeah. So going from uh, what many would call a very comfortable place in life, with being in the same church for uh, almost 25 years, uh, going from a well-paid job and and very comfortable in all of that to no income, going to school, looking for a church, and moving the family. Um, we start looking, and to to be honest, we're, as best we know, we're going to be here two years, and, and uh, the goal was to get our associates and then kind of reevaluate and say, okay, God, are you going to provide um, something for us to go into into full-time ministry, or am I going to have to get my, my bachelor's, which um, is still potentially on the table, but um, not a desire of mine, nor was school to begin with, <laughs> um, because as I said, I'm not an academic uh, guru by any means. But nonetheless, um, we we did search in the area, and there's a lot of good churches here. And there's a, not only is are there a lot of good churches, there's just a lot of churches. Period in oh, Tennessee, yeah. uh, and so um, we did visit a few different churches, and and to keep that into third gear, we um, God brought us to to see more First Baptist. Um, and uh, um, so, so with that, we kind of get plugged in. It's kind of honestly a little bit refreshing to be able to come to church, come to worship, uh, go to a Sunday school class, have no responsibilities. And that, that was part of my uh, little bit of an issue as well, was uh, just going too many different directions in Indiana and coming here and, okay, I've got school, and that's it, and being a dad and a, and a, and a husband. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, uh, but the Lord gave that time of rest to uh, kind of reevaluate, uh, we decided that Seymour First Baptist was the church that we would join, uh, thinking about um, answering some questions for Makai, our youngest, um, and uh, having a good youth group. And, and, and there were good youth groups in some of the other churches we visited as well, but just found like this, this was the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, so shortly after we joined, um, we saw a little bit of a, a need through some conversations of of Melody, our uh, our lead pastor, Corey, and his wife, Melody, uh, was trying to fill a role in, in the college age class and was trying to do, you know, orchestra and, and just be a pastor's wife and be available to as needed, and yeah. that's important. Said, you know what, if you'd like, we'd come on and, and teach that class um, and take that responsibility so that you can still be involved and she still fills in uh, when I'm not around. Um, but... Uh, to alleviate some of that responsibility. And from there, that was just, I think, the Lord moving. And, and um, in marriage ministry, uh, we've counseled a lot of young couples, and that's that's just a perfect spot for um, uh, counseling those that are thinking about marriage and mm-hmm. who, who is not thinking about uh, marriage in one way or another when they're uh, in their late teens and, and 20s. Right. So um, that's part of my classes yeah. as well. And so uh, that moved into something a little bit more formal, um, I guess, when you probably had a conversation with Corey somewhere along the lines and said, "Hey, let's let's make you an intern. Let's mm-hmm. let's give you some some added responsibility." And and I think and and just I, I want to encourage you in this. And 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 I wasn't lying. I mean, they they were really singing your praises coming on board, and and we're hopeful that you know you would uh, consider, you know, because things were, you know, you were coming through school and coming to the end of that and and options were open to you. And, and uh, we, we obviously selfishly hoped that you would be able to continue to be a part of what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. Um, but talk about a little just about that, you know, that move into added responsibilities and, and more formalized internship. So after my first year of school, the, the first summer was coming on, and I, I desired to serve an internship in a, in a church. Um, uh, I was either going to do that or just find a job and work as many hours as I could. And uh, I, I went to the staff here, Corey and Jason, and just said, do you guys uh, have, do you, 
do you do that type of ministry? And, you know, an internship, some churches do and some don't. And Corey's like, oh, we're all about internships. We love them. Um, So um, after some conversation with them, uh, they brought me on as an intern, and I was able to actually get class credit for that Mm -hmm. uh, for the first summer. And then after the summer, um, they're, they're like, well, why don't you just stay on as an intern through the fall? And then after the fall, they're like, well, why don't you just stay on through the spring? Um, <laughs> which then started leading into some conversations about this, uh, this full-time, part-time position we just mentioned. Yeah. Um, because also, um, when those conversations started, uh, we were looking uh, to take a position with Block Ministries. Yeah, talk a little um, bit about that so people will know what that's about, too. Yeah, so we were introduced to Block Ministries through school. Um, it's a ministry, uh, really, that's been located in Cincinnati for over 25 years. Uh, they're in Price Hill, uh, which is kind of a suburb of Cincinnati, but also known as Cincinnati. Um, and they have... Uh, uh, they have about 27 different ministries in, in Cincinnati that they've uh, created, seen the need for, and have been able to uh, meet some of those needs through those different ministries in Cincinnati. Um, and so uh, some, uh, well, Woodlawn Christian Church had encouraged them to come down here and, and have uh, their ministry in Vestal. Um, they've also decided recently to expand into Louisville, Kentucky, but they had come to our school uh, as the founder there had gone to Johnson Bible College at the time and had left and, and went on to start this ministry. Um, it had come back to Johnson and kind of spoke of what was going on in Cincinnati and, and the need and the desire to uh, start um, a block ministries in Vestal, uh, Tennessee, which is once again a, a suburb, uh, an old suburb of, of Knoxville, uh, but now is just Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. South Knoxville um, area. For those that are from here, know Vestal. Um, and it's just a community that that uh, has some needs. And um, and also, it's, it's kind of a, a cool situation where the, the center is in located in the middle of Montgomery Village. And, and we're uh, currently, you know, able to do, walk alongside and partner with uh, the center with Travis Henderson there. And... Uh, just try to serve those in in, in Vestal. Uh, what it'll look like in Vestal, we're not sure. Right now our titles are community engagement coordinators because mm-hmm. we're trying to engage the community and really see, not go into that community and tell them what they need in regards to um, we know they need Christ. Yeah. And that's the ultimate goal within Block Ministries is to bring them uh, the love of Christ, that they have value and, and who God has created them to be um, and who they are but they can have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I mean, that is the goal. But we want to find out their needs and the things that they say they need so that we can try to maybe uh, use those opportunities to, to share the love of Christ with them um, uh, just by, by being kind and being neighborly. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, um, so we're, we've just started that ministry. We've been there probably about eight weeks now. Yeah. Um, and uh, so what that will look like moving forward, we're not sure yet. We have a few ideas, um, um, but uh, a, a teaching kitchen is, is in the works and a community uh, uh, location out of a house uh, is, is in the, the goal, uh, the near goal. And we have some future three to five year dreams and goals that we feel the Lord is, is leading us to, but uh, he hasn't opened those doors yet. So. Yeah, very cool. And so if you're listening and want to know more about that, you can look up. It's at BLOC, Correct. Block Ministries, uh, and uh, reach out to Ben, and he can probably give you some more information about what they're what they're doing there. So we, we said, we, we just told you earlier on, he's, he's now doing that full-time, and he's is now our part-time college minister. And, again, I mean, you've done a wonderful job there, uh, obviously, God is is using you guys in a powerful way to build those relationships with the, with the college kids, and it's it's really grown. Uh, we have access to a lot of college kids in our area, which is it's a bonus. But as you know, and as most folks know, you know, there's a lot of transient nature to college age, and you know, a lot of kids are coming and going, and a lot of kids that are here are moving off to college and things like that. But a lot of kids from there are coming here, and uh, but for whatever reason, for such a time as this. You know, you've got over 50 kids on that roll, and right. a large majority of them are coming right now on Sundays, and that's fun. Talk talk a little bit about that and some excitement yeah, there. Fun. And as you said, they do kind of come and go, but I, I do believe one of the 
big factors with um, the young adults we have in our class right now is they have a they do have a desire to to know God deeper mm -hmm. and in a better way and and so there's a desire there and I think that's true for a lot of young adults these days they've they've heard a lot of things over the years but um, they've realized that um, knowing God is is very important and so there's a hunger there within this particular group of young adults and I would also say that um, my wife is a big partner to um, what's going on and uh, and, and Melody as well she, as I mentioned she was here when we took off uh, with teaching this class um, but she um, and mm -hmm. uh, Kaya have developed relationships with the ladies in ways that as a man I'm not able to as young adults and and I think that plays a huge factor in uh, some of the uh, growth that we've seen as well and just being able to interact and be there for them and share uh, with them life experience and things to expect and how they can uh, continue to to grow and and foster that desire that our young adults have today and I, I just think back of the time when I was at that age and just wrestling with um, that that and I wasn't able to go as deep as what was reality for me uh, making those decisions trying to figure out next steps there's so many decisions do I want to follow the Lord am I going to follow the culture that I'm in you know they're 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 just total polar opposites of, of each other and am I going to really trust the Lord with my life and and I've got a where am I going to go to school? Where am I going to get a job? Who am, am I going to ever get married? Am I am I going to be single the rest of my life? Uh, I don't want to go into debt, or do I want to go into debt? I mean, there's so many things that uh, young adults are wrestling with, and it's even worse today. I think there's so many more. I say worse, more decisions. I think to be made, uh, more things pulling at them with technology and different things. So, I really my effort is to try to speak into their life to say it's worth it. Um, a life with the Lord is the best place that they can ever be and to say yes to Him. And what's cool is um, as early as like last night, I, I was texting with a young man uh, from our church who is wrestling with, you know what, I, I, I need to just say yes to the Lord and, and I don't know the answers. Um, but I think I'm making the decision that I'm going to say yes. Mm. And that's what it's all about. Man, and I think on that note, that's probably the best place that we could we could land this ship. Ben, thank you so much for giving us your time. I, we're going to have you in here more uh, to talk about. We may have a whole thing on block and just what God's doing, uh, and you can come in here and and get in on some of this stuff as we talk about topics and stuff like that too. We'll we'll make sure that that happens. But thank you again. Uh, appreciate you giving us the time. Thank you for telling us your story. It's a powerful testimony, really is, and and I'm so thrilled that you're you get to be a part of us, and and you're there as a as a as a tool that God can use to share your story and what God how God has been faithful to you and your family to encourage others on their journey. And so appreciate you, brother. And Aunt, and I thank you uh, for listening again. Uh, as we say every time. If you found something of value here today, if there was something that uh, you would like maybe to share with someone else who may have a, uh, an interesting tie-in with what you've heard today, then we encourage you to share it. We encourage you to follow us, subscribe, uh, and all those kinds of things. Like, I don't know what all you do on all, all the social media pages, uh, but just do all the things. And uh, again, thank you for listening to see more from The Front Pew, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to see more from The Front Pew. Our sole desire for this podcast is to glorify God by educating and encouraging His body. If you would like to learn more about anything you've heard today, feel free to reach out by email at staff at seymourfbc.org or by visiting our website at seymourfbc.org. If you're located near our community and do not have a church home, come worship with us at 1015 a.m. on Sunday morning. Until then, we pray God's richest blessings on you and yours as you love God, love others, make disciples, and live the life.